Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll explore the rules for double negation. Double negation is when we use two negatives. And in English, in our speaking and in our writing, we're usually taught to try to avoid double negation. For example, when someone says, I am not unwell, the listener may take a moment to try to figure out whether the person is well or not. In logic, it's much clearer. The first rule regarding double negation is that if we see a formula on a line, we can conclude the double negation of that formula. And that is double negation introduction. This is the not symbol, so what we can say, it's not true that it's not the case that phi. So again, it's a little bit odd, but in symbols, it's much clearer. So this one is uh, always part of natural deduction. There's another part, another rule that uh, sometimes is and sometimes isn't used. Um, it, it will not be used in an intuitionistic or constructivist logic. We will, however, employ it. And this says that if we see a double negation on a line, we can conclude that the formula should be on its own line, and this is double negation elimination. Let's try to use these in a very simple proof. Suppose that we have um, not not P and Q, and from that premise we want to conclude P and Q. We might think, well, if from phi we can deduce not not phi, and if from not not phi we can deduce phi, then surely we can just substitute wherever we need to. However, substitution is not a process that's permitted in natural deduction. What we have to do is we have to break it down into its component parts. One reason for this is that in later studies in natural deduction, we'll be using natural deduction to reason about software. And in software, it's particularly perilous to perform these substitutions. So we want to be sure that we can perform it. So in order to do this, let's, as usual, start by writing down the premise, which is not not P and Q. So that is our premise. And the conclusion that we want to arrive at is P and Q. And if we use forward reasoning, we can see, well, the structure of this overall is a conjunction. And if you have any doubts about this, you can refer to the rules of binding in logic to see that what we're doing with this is this double negation applies to P. It doesn't apply to the whole conjunction. The only way that we can get from here to here is if we break this apart using conjunction elimination. I'll start with the left conjunct, so I'll assert not not P, and I'll do that because from line one I can use conjunction elimination type one. I can also pull Q out onto its own line, so that would be Q comes from line one using conjunction elimination type two. And in order to get here, I have to have P on its own line. Well, I can do that by applying double negation elimination. So I can say that I can arrive at P, I can write line P because I see not not P on its own line, and that is line two. And now by using double negation elimination, I can assert P. And now I have P on its own line and Q on its own line. And so I'm able to conclude that P and Q is true. And this is from line four and line three using conjunction introduction. We can we used forward reasoning there. Let's try a slightly more complicated one. Suppose that we have not not P and not not Q, 
and what we want to assert is q and p. Well, we would begin, as always, by writing the premise, which is not not p and not not q. So that is our premise. And we would write our conclusion, which is q and p. If we apply backward reasoning, we can see that we need to have q and p on their own lines. So we could actually put those down because that's the only way that we can get here is by conjunction introduction, is we could write q on its own line and p on its own line. So I will leave it to you to fill in the remaining parts of this proof by using the rules for double elimination and for conjunction.